In this video, I'll explain how you can use the Polyworld Interiors Pack to create some really cool interior spaces for your faceted worlds. Um, first is the initial scene setup. So we want to go to Assets, actually Edit, Snap Settings, and just make sure your uh, X, Y, and Z are set to half meter increments. Rotation can be whatever you want. Um, 90 is a good value, but I'll just leave it at 45. We'll keep this window open so we can easily snap the assets to the grid. And so we'll go down to the Pilot World Interiors A prefabs folder. Always work out of the prefabs for this particular pack because I've set up collision and uh, group things a certain way based off their pivots. So it'll work real well for you. And so we have Home A, Props and Underground. Uh, home A is where the most of your work's gonna be. Uh, that's a large set of like um, walls and panels and ceilings, windows um, for uh, just a first and second floor of a house. And the underground is a pack for underground. A lot of stonework, more kind of rough and dirt and uh, less furnished place, kind of like a basement of a house. And the props is all uh, furniture, food. There's uh, lots of props like books, barrels, baskets, bowls, uh, lights like chandeliers, flowers, um, you know, bags, all kinds of stuff. Lots of decorative items. And then within that, you have a lighting folder which has some really cool uh, prefab light objects with um, dynamic light cookies and a special script that'll let you flicker the light really cool. So uh, for now, let's just go back to the Home A folder. And I always start with a floor. Okay. And we'll just start duplicating him. And control D, duplicate, and then hold Control down while you drag. What I'm gonna do is just make a three by three room here. Okay, so this is now on the grid. And then what we're gonna do is start placing some walls. So let's go to the home A walls folder. And here we have a large selection of stuff. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with trims. When you just wanna make a basic wall, uh, you're gonna usually start with one of these Typically one of these two trim models here. Trim C is double-sided. So you can see here, this is good for like open-aired second level floor things. I'll use that in a second. So we'll bring in trim A. Make sure we're aligned to pivot. Snap them to the axis and we'll just control drag them into position. Now you see there's just you have the trim at the top and you have a trim on the bottom, but there's nothing uh, in between. For those, you're gonna use the wall panels. Type A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, these are just different visual designs for what that panel could be. So this is kind of like a, a stone. Type B is a variation of that stone. Um, C has like some shelves and some uh, cabinet doors. Uh, you can put like books here or decorations. So we'll take this guy, snap him, and then we'll just move him into position. Now we'll just flush out the rest of the room with more trims. Okay, so that's cool. Now you just have a basic room. And if you want to have this kind of open like this, you're going to see uh, Unity doesn't cast shadows from back faces. Um, you can either disable the sunlight or you can just go to your mesh render and do two-sided. So now you'll get shadows from the back faces. So we have a basic room and that's pretty cool. You know, we could swap out the floors with a different floor panel if we want. Um, uh, but what we're gonna do is I wanna put a doorway here. Um, I wanna expand this out to just another two meters. Okay, now we have a space. These main wall sections are six meters in width. But if you go back, you're gonna have some that are two meters. 
basically you want your walls to be either two or six. Those are the options you have. Um, uh, we need a two meter piece. So we will go to, we have anything that has two meter at the end of it. So here's panel A, that's the brick. Panel B, we'll just use that one. Put that in a position. And for over here, we're gonna put the door there. And I already have a panel for a door here. Snap it, just put it in a position. Yeah, you'll notice that it's double-sided, but a threshold and a door is missing. And for that, you want to go to the props folder. And here we have four different types of doors. We just have a regular square door, and then we have three arch doors. I usually use the arch doors for exits, um, just so it's easy for the player to know where to go. Um, so I'll just use the square door here. Snap him and put him into place, and there you go. Now this door is closed, and you can manually open it by just rotating it like that. Or you can write a script to um, activate the door animations. Each door has animations set up for it. Let's open and close. But for now, I'm just going to open this door like that. Let's finish off this wall here. Now our room is looking pretty cool, but it needs a roof. There. Now for that, we will go to the roofs or ceilings. Got a couple of different types of ceilings here. We have a basic one. This one is just two meters, pretty basic. Um, then we have uh, different kind of ceiling decorations, but we'll pick one of these roofs. So we have a two meter roof, we have a six meter roof. This is a uh, A-frame. Then we have a vaulted option. Vaulted options are pretty cool. These are six meters. So we'll do vaulted A. And it's up here. Now you'll notice a pivot is down below. This pivot is aligned with the floor, just to give you a, an idea of where it should go. So as long as we snap it there, we'll be on grid. So this window is cool. This, this ceiling is pretty cool because there is this uh, illuminated kind of window. Um, that's a separate material you can edit and modify. You can turn that emission off or swap the material. Um, just copy these. And here's a B variant without the emissive or the windows. Now there's a cap as well. So for that, we'll do the ceiling arch end. All these assets are made so that they snap together. Also, there's been great care to avoid any uh, T vertices. So if you're doing VR, you shouldn't notice all that crazy kind of white snow flickering between meshes. I'll put him there. Cool. Now our room should be sealed. Cool. Basic room. Uh, we can prop it out with some props. So if we go to the prefabs props folder. Uh, we have a bed we can place. Cool. Okay. You'll notice that these surfaces here are bright. These are reflective surfaces and they're looking for a reflection probe. So if you quickly make one, Now our probe isn't reflecting much because it's not going to reflect static objects. So what I usually do is I'll just find all my meshes in the scene and I'll at least make them reflection probe static. So now the assets are set up properly. As long as you have your meshes tagged as light probe static the probes will render in there, or the assets will render in the probe. Okay, so we have our door, and now uh, let's just
So since these roofs are six meters and the, this hallway width is four, we're gonna need our basic ceiling. Okay, it's coming together. Um, next we'll do stairs leading down. We need to go to the end. We're gonna look for stairs path assets. These are specific uh, wall types that have the floor missing where the stairs are supposed to be. There's three of them because there's three different positions. There's the, that one end there, oops, there, and then in the middle. So you can pick whichever one is right for you. In this case, we'll just go with stairs path A and just turn this and align him. And you might be noticing the purple vertex colored faces. Um, that's there for a reason, I'll get to it in a second. <clears throat> go to the floors folder and we have three types of stairs. We have two straight stairs and one that it's L-shaped. There's the L-shaped, and there's the straight one, and there's the other straight variant. The L and one uh, of the straight variants has a curve to let you pass underneath, and then this one is just blocked off there. That's stairs A. So for this, we'll just go with stairs B, snap them and rotate them. Um, now the stairs are probably the only asset in the pack that can't be aligned with the grid. And that's because of special measurements that were used for the walls and the extrusions and just getting, and getting everything set up uh, for stairs wasn't feasible to keep it on the grid. So I colored these faces purple so that you would know where to snap them. So just hold V and snap them into place. And now it's aligned. Now there's some empty space here. We're gonna fill that. One second. So now you have a space in between the stairs and the floor. And to fix that, we need to go to the walls folder and use this first to second floor buffer. Now you need this so that everything stays within scale. So we'll rotate that, snap it to the grid and we're going to put that where it should be. Now it's six meters in width, so it matches the width of the trim pieces. We'll duplicate that, put it here. Now if you notice, if it doesn't initially fit, just rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis and it'll snap into place. What's great about this is the assets were made to help you get whatever kind of floor plan you want. So let's say you wanted to have this kind of like empty under here. Well. You could, there's a trim piece that doesn't have the bottom footing. And that's just called trim top. We have trim top 2 meter, 4 meter, and 6. So we could do 6. So I'm just going to flesh out the rest of this space, and I'll just let the video go for the next couple seconds until I illustrate the next point. There's one other piece I wanted to show, and that is the transition piece. So in the walls folder, we have a door home to underground. This is a piece that I use to uh, pretty much represent the doorway between the actual home, the living space, and the underground area. So if you want to set up like a trigger volume when the player walks within the doorway, hits a trigger, he can teleport to another map or another section of the scene um, into the underground space, which we'll build next. The underground folder has a little bit less meshes and prefabs, but it's still really cool and really powerful to use. Um, these are on a four meter grid, um, just to make a little more space uh, down below. Uh, so let's go ahead and place a floor. 
So we have um, we have dirt floors, we have a flat stone, we have a ridge stone, which is raised, and we have uh, small little brick walkway pieces. So we'll just place a dirt floor as a base there. Now, the walls are a lot easier and less um, less granular to place. Um, so pretty much you want to look at these base meshes here. There's a base one way, which is like a dead end. There's a two way, which is like a hallway. And there's a two way straight, a three way, a four way. And for this, let's just do like a, a two way. Okay, and he sits there. He's basically just floorboards and a ceiling. And for that, we want to place some walls. So we have wall base dirt we can place. Snap all the axes. Now you notice the pivot of this object is aligned with the floor. So everything is nice and square. So when you want to make uh, variations, you can just duplicate and rotate around its pivot so you can get a nice corner. We'll delete that and do another one. We'll do um, a rock, which is a little bit more extrusion and it's a little bit recessed. And for the corners, we're going to use posts. I'm sure in a props folder, actually. <laughs> it's still in the walls folder. So we have uh, a simple post which stands straight up. You can place those if you want with their pivots aligned with the floor. Or you can use the larger support ones that are uh, set up based on where they should be positioned relative to the, uh, the floor layout. So this post should be in the center because you can see all four sides. And we're gonna use the corner post. Snap him, put him into place, and we'll rotate him. So now he's nice and snug in a corner, holding up the ceiling. And basically, you just keep doing that. Um, let's do another floor. We'll do a ridged floor. We're going to use the post side because it is located on the side. And now for these open walls, we're going to use a piece of stone. These are cool meshes. And the same thing, it's just a wall, align it with the floor. And that's all you gotta do. There's four varieties. This is more of a square stone, this is more of a uniformly rectangular one. Uh, this one's pretty cool because it's kind of buckling a little bit. And that's pretty much how you would construct an underground region, is you just kind of create these larger meshes that go on a string and you can open it up to a larger place so like here's the four-way basically the four-way is just the roof so in a demo scene it opens up into a uh, larger area where i don't know people eat or practice fighting um, and that's what this could be and back here what we'll do is we will go and put our door to the first floor. So once you go through there, uh, if you scripted it, you can teleport back to here and back and forth. That pretty much wraps it up for the underground section. Uh, explore the rest of the package and see what other props you can use. There's a lot of interesting stuff to see. Thanks.